expecting to fly. This is a story like many other stories about a journey. Cars are meant for journeys, and this journey began in 1972. It was an optimistic time. The future was ours for the having. You could strike sparks anywhere. Well, the dream is alive. We're going mobile. A piece of the 70s pulled from the graveyard. Now, the journey begins. The Carmen Ghia was an instant hit. Almost everyone I talk with learned how to drive in one or had a Ghia pass through their lives. So, under an auspicious sign, a Waimea rainbow in February, I begin. First, I sell the old engine for $100. The gas tank goes. There is something sad about a car with a hole where the engine used to be. The electric motor, precariously balanced, this is to be my new source of motive power. Here's the adapter on the electric motor and the flywheel. To the right is the disassembled clutch. The clutch and flywheel stay in the car for simplicity. The standard shift gives me reverse. Now get the electric motor with flywheel and clutch attached back where the engine was. Notice the electronic controller bolted to the firewall. The electric motor is in suspended by those four bolts. Now seal it up to keep the dust and water out of the motor area. Remember that it's going to rain and there's some sensitive electronics back there. Even the old 72 Ghia wiring is complicated. Newer cars will be much more of a challenge. Draw the new wiring diagram with the new electronics before starting the wiring. Be sure you know the intent of the old and the new. Safety is key. There's a lot of energy involved here. There are interlocks everywhere and they are a good idea. The marvelous NE555 timer, jack of all trades. The Darlington pair handles the switching current. All of the bulbs are LEDs now, except the headlights, which are xenon. The battery packs are split front, middle, and back, so the current flows through the whole car. Fuses on each pack. There is a master cutoff breaker near A1. Two Pactrar remotes spider out to monitor the 10 batteries. There is a separate battery for the low-voltage systems, the lights and horn, windshield wipers, etc. The gauge on the left shows the low-voltage battery level. The one on the right is the total pack voltage. Underneath is current with a scale to 400 amps. When I get home in the evening after work, I habitually plug in the e -Gia. It just plugs into a wall outlet. And in the morning, my tank is full. It is really easy to get used to not going to the gas station and spending money. Here is the front battery cage. It sits low where the gas tank was, so there is still trunk room. The extra weight of the batteries, 800 pounds, plus the electric motor, made the car sit too low. 
so I replace the shocks with coilovers. Weight is better distributed now, with four batteries in back, two in the middle, and four in front. The Carmen Ghia used to be front end light. Pack management is a key technique to master. I purchased a pack tracker unit that monitors each individual battery. Total current is monitored too. Individual battery charge, pack temperature, current is monitored. Here is the basic pack tracker unit with a minimal display. It has a serial interface putting out a serial CSV stream. The Zaras PDA reads the CSV stream and presents an in-depth color display. I wrote a library in C to parse the CSV data coming from the pack tracker serial line. I also built a null modem along the way. Then there is a C++ GUI built with Qtopia. The big color display presents lots of data. I can monitor total kilowatt hours used and even enter the cost of energy and show my total cost of driving. How does it feel? Well, it's kind of amazing all the stuff you don't need and don't need to pay for anymore. Did we just get used to the need for all this stuff?